It's pounding, as you can tell, maybe. But I want you to know, my name's Adele McKinney, and that's Mike McKinney, and we're your friends. <laughs> okay, so anyways, um, where's the clicker? This is okay? Okay. They can see you. Maybe it's better not to see me. Remember, she's got new glasses, and she can't see out of them. So. Which I know you've all been wondering, what is the miracle that changed the world, okay? Uh, Dr. Chung this morning, he was talking about education, and education without the Lord, education without God's Word is just up here, but it's nothing here, nothing changes. Um, I'm going to tell you about the miracle that changed the world. This person here, Noah Webster, um, he said education is useless without the Bible. The Bible was America's basic textbook in all fields. God's word contained in the Bible has furnished all necessary rules to conduct, to direct our conduct. And then he went on to say, say that every civil government, this is something that all the nations can take because I'm not talking about America, I'm talking about the world. Every civil government is based upon some religion or some philosophy. Caleb Lowe, one of our students, he wrote a very excellent term paper on we are in an ideological war right now. And if you think about it, we have good and evil, truth, untruth, and things like that. Education, though, in a nation will propagate the religion of the nation. In America, the foundational religion was Christianity, and it is so it is sown in the hearts of Americans through the home and through the private and public schools for centuries. Our liberty, growth, and prosperity was a result of the biblical philosophy of life. Okay? Our continued freedom and success is dependent upon educating the youth of America in the principles of Christianity. Now, we have lost a lot of that, I think, right now. Uh, Noah Webster, he was a dictionary person. He did the dictionary. He was also called the father of American scholarship and education. In his lifetime, he was also a lawyer, a schoolmaster, author, newspaper editor, and an outspoken politician. Noah Webster, Noah Webster was like many who were part of the founding fathers of this nation. These men believed in the manifest destiny of this nation. Not to be a nation that would be filled just with economy and prosperity and business. Not to be a nation with a powerful military force. But their dream was to establish a nation built on the principles of faith found in the good book, which had been recently published as the King James Version of the Bible. They came with a dream to be on fire, to live in peace and harmony without dictators and tyrants constantly changing the rules to satisfy their own lust. Okay? What these men developed was something no other nation had done. The miracle that changed the world was they established a nation that was built on God's natural law. Now, the first time I heard about God's natural law was Sister Mila. She called it God's eternal law. This is something that's in effect from the beginning of century to now. It affects every nation, not just our nation. All the nations should have to be built on God's natural law. So the first principle is, got it? Take a breath. First principle, the only reliable basis for sound government and just human relations is natural law, God's natural law. Most Americans thought about have not even thought about what is God's natural law. Okay, but this person, this is Marcos Tullius Cicero, a Roman statesman, an orator, a lawyer, a philosopher who was born 106 BC, before Jesus, okay? And he clearly described the touchstone for good laws, sound government, and the long range philosophy or formula for to have a happy life or happy human relations is accomplished by embracing God's natural law. He called it um, by embracing the divine creator's natural law. So he thought about it. To Cicero, the building of a society on principles of natural law was nothing more or less than recognizing and identifying the rules of conduct or the right conduct with the laws of the supreme creator of the universe. Okay. Cicero concluded that once the reality of the creator is clearly identified in the mind, the only intelligent approach to government, justice, human relations, in terms of the law which the creator, supreme creator, has already established. 
The creator of God's order of things is called natural law. The law is universal and eternal. That's what Dr. Miller said. It was eternal law. Dr. Miller in her presentation spoke about being governed, uh, being governed by the governed. Who are we governed by today? Ourselves, our law, or are we go governed by God's natural law? Okay, supersedes all laws, okay? God's natural law is in agreement with nature, unchanging, everlasting. All mankind can live in peace and harmony once they embrace God's natural law, okay? Whether in the jungles of the unreached people to the streets of New York, God's natural laws, when applied, have the same results. Life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. To the founding fathers, this was monumental is discovery, although at the time, perhaps they didn't even know or realize the impact that this would have in generations to come. You think about these guys sitting around developing the, the, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, the Constitution. They didn't know that they were developing something that would last over 200 years. America's Constitution is the longest living Constitution in the world, okay? So now here's the next point. Ah, let's see. Okay, so points. Man is endowed with foresight, quick intelligence, complex, keen. He has memory, full of reason and prudence with a certain distinguished status given by whom? Our supreme God. Man is given the ability to reason. When reason becomes matured and perfected, guess what? It's called wisdom, okay? Natural law as regards to humans is contained in two great commandments. And this is what he thought. This is what Cicero taught. He didn't know God, God, but he said to love, obey, and respect the all-wise creator, okay? Number two, to love your neighbors as yourself. If you do those two laws, you can live in peace and harmony anywhere in the world. You can have happiness, prosperity, if you respect those two laws. Okay, next one. Justice is impossible, except under the principles of God's just law. So the glue that holds human beings together in the commonwealth of a just society is love. Love of God. Love of God's great law of just and love of one's fellow man. Think about that. If we love God and we love our fellow man, what? We have no crime. We have no bad things happening. You know, okay, so this is what, it's, this is what he said. So natural law supersedes man's law. Did you know here in... Congress, and our Congress, um, there are 20,000 laws against, the, against or regulating gun ownership, okay, in America. 20,000 laws to regulate gun ownership in America. But God gave one law. What was it? Thou shalt not murder. Okay, one law. Thou shalt not murder and love one another. If we did those things, we wouldn't need gun laws, right? Okay. That's the simple, simple thinking, right? How many laws are there in the United States of America today? Anybody know? Nobody knows. It's like 1,200 new laws came to the state of California last year, added to another 6,000 laws, 65, I don't know if you know. Probably millions. Millions. <laughs> Why do we have so many laws? Because of man's interference with God's natural law, okay? Legislation, okay, next one. Legislation in violation of God's natural law is a scourge to humanity, okay? All law should be measured against God's law. It is foolish to think that all belief that everything that is just is found in the customs or laws of nations. How many nations have instituted laws that were deadly, ruinous to the people, which have put people in slavery or unjust practices? In the history, there have been many, many unjust laws. All laws should be measured against God's law. So when we're thinking about election time, we're thinking about Supreme Court, anything like that, all laws should be measured against God's law. If legislators pass laws that are evil or unjust, they, caught, they cannot mend that law through the passing of another law. And that's why we have 20,000 laws, because every law has a law. You know, every unjust law has a law. If the principles of justice are found on founded on voting of the people, the edicts of, or princes or decision of judge, justice, judges, then justice would sanction robbery, adultery, forgery wills. This is why today our nation, we have legislators and people who have voted in, into law things against God's natural law and is causing pain, heartache, disease, 
murder, suicide, cheating, stealing, because these laws were passed by people who ignored God's natural law. If the great power resides in the decision-making and decrees of fools, then the laws and the laws of nature can be changed by their votes. They then, that which is bad, they can call good. And that which is good, they will call evil. And this is exactly what happened in our society and other societies around the world. The second principle, there's only, I'm only gonna give you seven. A free people cannot survive under Republican Constitution unless they remain virtuous and morally strong, okay? So what is a Republican Constitution? Okay. A constitution, no republic, is a form of government where the rulers are elected and the rules are set down in a written constitution. It is often called a republic. The constitution limits the power of each office holder and constitutional republics usually have a separation of powers. So that's what we have in America. Yes. Benjamin Franklin said, only a virtuous people are capable of freedom. As nations become corrupt and vicious, they have more need of masters. But Solomon said, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear is ruled, the people mourn. This is why the essence of virtue that was instilled in our hearts in the generation of those born in the 40s, 50s, and 60s were eliminated in the generation to follow when legislatures and educators took prayer out of the classroom, Bibles out of the school libraries, and replaced it with philosophies of academia, psychologists that have produced generations of adults who lack a moral compass. And this is what we see in our young people today. We train cadets at Civil Air Patrol. They're 13 to 18 years old. Some come to the, to, the, to the squadron with no moral compass. They don't know what's right. They don't know what's wrong, okay? So this is why we have to change things, okay? So no moral compass in their lives, in their children's lives, in their grandchildren who have no conscience when it comes to lying, cheating, stealing, committing all kinds of illicit and moral acts, and even now killing and murdering their own parents. Okay, because we have lacked, we have not put the God's moral, uh, natural law into their lives. Freedom cannot be maintained under a Republican Constitution unless the people remain virtuous, virtuous and morally strong. The third principle is, the most promising method of securing a virtuous and morally stable people is we have to elect virtuous leaders. Amen. And this is not only in our nation, any nation of the world. Thou shalt provide out of the people able men. And this is what they believed. This is, this is what happened. Able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, unjust gain, and place in such places over them to be the rules, rulers. Okay, so these guys, this is the Philippines. Last year we had Diwa Guni Gundo here. Diwa Guni Gundo was instrumental in changing the philosophy of this nation. Before the Constitution, it said, Almighty, uh, I think it was, no, Divine Providence. They called God Divine Providence. After they had the revolt in 1986, when they redid the Constitution, guess what? They changed that to God Almighty, okay? That's one step they did. Second step, a few years ago, Diva Gunigundo pushed through, he got on, a thing, on his uh, money, all the money says, their motto. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Amen. Now look at the chain of events that have been happening in this nation, right? You see Brother Eddie, okay, Brother Eddie, um, the other one, Speaker Caetano, Joni, Joel, there's a lot of Christians now in office, why? Because that nation is trying to do good. They're trying to transform their nation. We can do that too, all we need. Any nation can do that. Australia is doing that. They've got good people now in the, in the parliament. He, members of Congress that really, uh, par members of Parliament that really love and believe God will say the Philippines is becoming the pearl of the Pacific again because of this, okay? So the third principle, oh, uh, who is this? Samuel Adams, okay? He said, but neither the wisest constitution nor the wisest laws will secure the liberty and happiness of people whose manners are universally corrupt. Mm -hmm. So as we see lawlessness and corruption coming into our society's life, we are the church. Yeah. We need to pray, we need to do something about it. We need to talk to our children, like John said, because if we don't talk to them, you know who's gonna to talk to them? 
the public schools in the world and what's going to happen to them, their little minds are going to get morally corrupt. Little, little over there, little Alice has been so sweet and she does probably doesn't understand anything we're saying, but the, her spirit does. Her spirit does, and someday, when she grows up, little Alice might be one of those leaders for Jesus Christ, you know? And maybe elected official, you never know. Okay, so anyways, this is what Samuel Adams said. I'm not even sure where I am. Okay, we're done. Four. Fourth principle, without religion, the government of a free people cannot be maintained. Have you seen a government of free people maintained without faith in God? You know, and when faith in God goes, what happens to that government? Wow. You notice know, around the world, okay? It starts to change. And instead in the government, you get all these other philosophies and things like that that have nothing to do with God. Okay, uh, thou shalt provide out of, I already did that part. Okay, fourth principle. Without religion, the government of people will cannot be maintained. So I'm almost done. Okay. Congress approved the Constitution in 1787. That same year, Congress passed the famous Northwest Ordinance. That one's not so famous now. You know why? Because in it, they emphasized the essential to teach religion and morality in the schools. And so from then until the 50s, when I was growing up in school, they taught religion and morality. Yeah. Article 3, religion, morality, and knowledge bring necessary to good government and the happiness of mankind. Schools and the means of education shall forever be encouraged. This is our this is our constitution. This is part of what we were founded on. What's going on today? Benjamin Franklin wrote this letter to Ezra Sweet, Ezra Stiles, president of Yale University. He said to him, Here's my creed. I believe in one God, the creator of the universe, that he governs it by his providence, that ought that he ought to be worshipped that the most acceptable service we render to him is doing good, that Brother Joseph said, doing good to his other children, that the soul of man is immortal and will be treated with justice in another life, respecting its conduct in this. This I take to be the fundamental points in all sound religion. Hmm? Love God, love your neighbor. That's what it's saying. The fourth, fifth, fifth and sixth, seventh principle, and I'll be done, I'm putting it together, says the fifth principle is all things were created by God. Therefore upon him all mankind are equally dependent and to him they are equally responsible. That's the fifth principle that our nation was founded on. The sixth principle is all men are created equal. That's number six, okay? And number seven, the proper rule of, the proper role of government is to protect equal rights, not provide equal things. Amen. You see? Not provide equal things, but protect equal rights. So I want to show you something about somebody that was just, his life was changed. Oh, oh, where am I? Okay. There are only two nations that were founded by God's people looking for a nation whose, makers, whose maker was God. When God called Abraham out of Ur to look for the promised land, he might have called Chinese too, but they didn't hear it. As they missed it. Because he might have called him before he called Abraham. But Abraham listened. Abraham obeyed. And he took off. And he went to an uncharted territory. And he ended up in the promised land. Okay, or at least he was there part of it away. But he established the nation of Israel. Now, our guys here, and I say our guys because in 1950, Hawaii became a state. So now I'm part of you guys, our guys. Okay, so Hawaii is a state now. So our ancestors came over, like Bob said, on the Mayflower, and they were looking for a place, a city whose maker, and, uh, whose maker was God, a city that would shine on the hill. And like I said, they didn't come here to look for gold. Or, at the time, they were just looking for freedom to worship God. So this is the things that they did. So, we believe, so, no. Brother, can you, where's he, go click that. This one you have to click. Uncle Philip, Uncle to all the young people watching this, what do you think is the one piece of advice you give them? Well, what I have discovered is that all of us are broken, we are all uh, missing piece. And for me, I discovered that that missing piece is God through Jesus Christ. I was always in search of uh, a better life, a better purpose, a better me, better everything. I was just uh, looking at all the things. When I realized that there is no better me or better things without Jesus, mm. 
then it all snapped in place. Maybe we have to look deeper. I treasure that more than anything. But I just wish for everyone to have that peace and joy. It sure beats a lot of money and material things that you may have. Yeah. It starts with accepting that you are broken and that there is a missing piece. And for me, personally, that missing piece is our Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Okay. Wow. The richest man in Singapore. Anybody know him? Let's make friends, okay? <laughs> okay. I love it. The church has the answer. Like Dr. Uh, Dr. Shan talks about the church is the answer, actually. We're the ecclesia, the ones that are called out. All of us have a different part. We're not all going to go now door to door, knock doors, but we all have a part. And that's what makes us unique. Everybody has a different part, but when we come together, we become a whole strong man. A man that can go out there and fight armies. Oh, by the way, how many left-handed people here? Left-handed? Uh, one, two, three. Okay, we're the warriors, you know? The left-handed warriors for the Lord. Okay. Anyway, I was just wondering, because there was another left-handed person here, too. Okay, so we believe that God has the best government, the best practices, the best academics. That's what Dr. Eric said. The church is a catalyst because the church brings the integrity, honesty, and purpose of God into the picture. The PGI movement to get the leaders involved in changing the world is to get the leaders involved in changing the world, to influence the world, to be the salt of the world. We need to reach people who are the movers and shakers of this world with the message of the miracle that changed the world and that God Almighty and His Son, Jesus Christ, that is a miracle that changed the world, okay? The, that is a mink, missing link in the lives of the leaders. And this is why we need to reach the leaders. Because a lot of them are like that richest man in Singapore. They have everything. They have power. They have authority. They have everything. But something's missing. And the missing link is Jesus. Late Peter Marshall said, the responsibility for the future course of the nation is thus given to my people. Second Chronicles 7.14, who are called by my name. This is not gen the general population, but the Christians within the nation. In other words, a remnant of truly committed Christians can make a significant dis difference in the course of a nation's history. And this is not only for America. Dexter Lowe and his family have been in, in Malaysia for 30, 40 years, and that country is beginning to change. Not only him, there's a whole bunch of Christians in Malaysia who are praying for the change of that nation. In Australia, we know uh, by a miracle that Prime Minister was re-elected because he had such criticism, just like President Trump, but the Christians prayed for him. And God made it so that he could be elected again. And it's because of the Christians in the nation. So whether you're in Hawaii, whether we're in California, Georgia, whether we're in Australia, whether we're in uh, Singapore, or where we are, uh, where's the other one? In the Swaziland, where the, uh, we honor it, uh, His Majesty in Swaziland. It doesn't matter. God's laws are the same for everyone, okay? And so we can be an influence, and we want you to be an influence. Take everything you've learned from this conference, like Dr. Rico say, take what you like, take what you don't like, don't take it, whatever. But we, doesn't matter, everybody has a part. And everybody's part is very important. And if we can join your part, great. If you can join our part, great. But we don't want to be all the same, or else it's going to be weird. One hand walking around this world, just one hand. We need a whole body to walk yeah. around. So God bless you, thank you. We're going to offer this class at Promise Christian University.